In this tutorial, we're going to be making something a little bit more on the fun side. However, it's still going to be quite basic on how to do it. We're going to make a little team deathmatch script to pretty much, well, as it says, when one side, blue four, kills however many up four, game's going to end, or it's going to print a hint, however you want to end it. We're just going to make it print a hint just to save us from actually calling the end game function, but that's very simple as well. So, how this is going to be done is with public variable server, pu public variable event handler, and a normal event handler, and something new that we're introducing is the for each command. So this is not necessarily going to be needed for if you're doing strictly multiplayer, but for AI purposes it's just going to save us ha the hassle of instead of double clicking on each one of these giving them a variable name then doing that variable name add event handler for all four of these units we can just do it once with the for each command so we're going to get started on that first and we're going to run it on the server so we're going to open up init server .sqf and you can see here it says script for each and then the array you want to run that script on. So what's inside of these braces here will be ran on every object inside of that array. So we want to do it on all units. So for each all units. And that's where we get introduced to what's called the magic variable. As you can see here, x. So x is pretty much going to be the selection of the variable. So I'll make another array real quick just to show an example. My array equals 1, 2, 4, 3, 8. So we could just do for each my array and on its first time running x is going to be assigned to this first element here which is 1. When it runs for the second time x is going to be equal to 2. Third time it's going to be equal to the 4 or the third element which is the number 4 and so on and so on. So that's how pretty much the magic variable x here is going to work. So for adding an event handler since we're doing all units it's going to be the object which in our case it's going to be x that is selecting the object then add event handler type we want it when the unit is killed so we're going to do the type event handler killed now in here is where we're going to want to have our script that runs when that unit is killed and I forgot a square bracket we're going to want to pretty much just run a public variable we'll pass the public variable to the server so we're also going to have a little check in here to determine the side of the unit so we can do if the pl if the unit is blue four, run add him this event handler which does this when he's killed. If the unit is op four, add this event handler to do this when he's killed. So if side x the magic variable equals west which is blue four, then we're going to add this event handler here and actually I can just kind of this whole thing if the side is east then we're gonna run this event handler here so for the west event handler we're gonna make a public variable server we're gonna call it uh, blue for killed for this one we're gonna make a public variable as well and we're going to call it op4 killed. So now we can go ahead and set up our actual public variable event handlers. So just get that out of the way. Actually, let's not make that in the same file. It's just X 
I'd go ahead and make a new one, execute one called public variable event handlers. Go ahead and copy the init. And open it. Alright, so we're going to make one for blue four killed. Blue four killed. Add public that long freaking word. Then we're going to make one for the op four that's killed. Make sure that is right. We're going to have two variables, and since this is running on the server, all we have to do is just, we don't have to really necessarily worry too much about locality since it shouldn't be altered by anything else. We're going to just make them global, so blue for deaths equals zero, op for deaths equals zero. And when this gets triggered, we want to increment blue for deaths by one, so blue for deaths equals blue for deaths plus one op for deaths equals op for deaths plus one now we want our little check so if op for deaths is greater than or equal to kill limit then we will run our little script there to output something that the limit has been reached so kill limit we're going to set it to three kills. So we're going to remote execute a hint. Op for limit reached. Remote execute hint. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. just rename the hint for blue four. Now this is where we can also get into a little bit more depth with just for the example and since I don't have anybody to actually go through and test this and show on an actual multiplayer server this is on line 10 whoops So I'm just going to be using the AI for this example. But it's the exact same concept. So we kill one, kill two, kill three, hop four limit reached. And fun. And the exact same thing would happen if I was to respawn one, two, and three. Blue four limit reached. So that's just an example, so if I was killed those three times, it would run, well, you know, that. So this is where pretty much you would want to have your end game. So we can just Google Armor 3 end game. Do, 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 MP end game. not exactly what I was looking for but it's just Google it you'll figure out how to call it it's like a BIS function on the wiki itself maybe it'll come up and eh, whatever we'll skip that for now so now we want to add our little checks so we can check if the we're gonna go ahead and get the side stuff of the units that we need. So we're going to bring up the event handler list. Find the killed event handler and go down to it. And you'll see here it has two parameters or arguments, whatever you want to call them. First one being the unit that the event handler is assigned to, which in this case for ours it would be us, and the killer, whoever pulled the trigger to kill that person. So, 
we can go ahead and get the side of the killer and the side of the unit that is dead. This is going to determine whether or not we have had a team kill or not. So, killer side equals side this select one. Dead, we'll just call it unit. I'll put it above here. Unit side equals side this select zero. So then if unit side equals killer side, then hint out a team kill was made on op four side, so op four team kill remote execute hint then else since it is not and it is going to the bottom. Since it was not a team kill then, since it's they do not equal each other, we're going to go ahead and pass, well, run the event handler on the server. Now, however, the problem with showing this as the example with AI is when they die, their event handler, when it triggers, it shows that they, they are civilian. So I can't place down another blue 4 unit and shoot him to show the example. And same thing, I can't have AI shoot other AI for the example of the same side. But since we're getting the side of the killer and the side of the unit that was killed, we can do this comparison. So it's very simple. If the sides of them equal each other, so if they're both blue four, or if they're both op four, run that there was a team kill. If otherwise, if they do not equal each other, we will determine that that was a legitimate kill. So blue four killed op four, or op four killed blue four, then we're gonna call the necessary event handler to run on the server. And then just trigger it as usual. So that's your quick little tutorial on how to do that. Since that seems to be kind of common on the Steam forums on how to do it, this will well, at least be enough to get somebody started.